it's the difference between empathy and compassion in leadership. And one of the first things I would say is that I'm not looking for empathetic leaders because empathetic leaders don't necessarily have the capacity to maintain their empathy over long periods of time or be inclusive. Now, let me explain. Often when people are talking about empathy, what they're speaking about is the ability to understand what someone else is feeling by accessing your experiences of that feeling previously. And that's often recommended in lots of different helping professions. Um, leaders are often taught about empathy in programmes. But research was done that suggested that what we call compassion fatigue is actually empathy fatigue. We get tired from accessing feelings of, that are dysregulating and upsetting too frequently. And leaders are no different. We don't want leaders going around feeling empathy in every setting. Now, that doesn't mean that I want or suggest cold leadership is helpful. The difference is I suggest compassionate leadership is more effective. What I mean by this is compassion is the ability to trust that people are experiencing what they say they're experiencing as they're experiencing it. It's the ability not to have to bring it into our own lens and access our own similar feelings, but instead the ability to appreciate that somebody is experiencing those feelings as they describe them in this setting. And for that to be valid enough for us to take into account and act upon. Why this matters in inclusion is often when we use empathy, we, we are going to reinforce the like me bias. The bias that says this experience was difficult for me, so therefore I can understand that that experience is difficult for you. Whereas if you haven't had the experience that somebody else has had, it means that you may find it harder to actually support them effectively. And leaders need to be able to support everybody, even those with different emotional experiences and reactions to their own. And that's why compassion is more effective than empathy, because what we call compassion fatigue is actually empathy fatigue. It's the fatigue of being connected to difficult feelings for too long a period of time, wearing down on our resilience. Whereas what compassion lets us do is it lets us appreciate somebody else's experience as they described it and as they experience it without us having to go into our into our own little box of feelings and experiences to validate and understand theirs. And in terms of inclusion, it makes us more inclusive because we can appreciate somebody's experience and emotions based on their experience and how they've described it rather than filtering it through our own ideas of what's appropriate or inappropriate or what would be hurtful or what wouldn't be hurtful and therefore having to connect to it with them. Instead, we can connect with them and appreciate where they are at as they are describing it. And that's compassion. And that's why we need to develop more compassionate approaches to leadership rather than empathetic. Because empathetic will at some point require our defences to kick in and shut down because it will be too much on the system if it's ongoing over a long period of time or very frequently or very difficult emotions being experienced. Whereas with compassion, we can maintain a connection to the person, appreciate their experience without necessarily plugging in our own experience to theirs to make sense of it. We just appreciate it as they describe it rather than through our own lens and our own filter therefore putting us under more emotional pressure and strain. So I don't want to see more empathetic leaders. I don't need more empathetic leaders in, in the world. What we need is more compassionate leaders. People who think about how other people are experiencing things through their lens and appreciate and validate it without necessarily having to have had that experience. And that's why compassionate leadership will result in more resilient leaders it will result in more effective leadership and effective decisions because you're no longer just using your own frame of reference to make decisions, but you're actually listening to other frames of reference. You're understanding the emotional experiences that others are having, even though it's not something you can connect to directly. And you're going to be able to process your emotion more effectively because you aren't entangling it with the experiences of others. You are able to maintain your own emotional regulation while also being an emotional support to others. So I would say let's not focus on empathetic leadership. It is the wrong word to use, but it's also the wrong practice. I don't want leaders who only see the world through their own experience and can only feel things and process things that directly relate to them in some way. We need leaders who have the capacity to understand that other people experience things differently 
and the capacity to offer support and emotional regulation to others, even if they haven't had that direct dysregulation or experience themselves. And so that's why I talk about compassionate leadership and not empathetic leadership. Empathy has limitations. It burns us out quicker. It tires us. It has a weight associated with it. And it has a self-centeredness. We must be able to relate to the experience to empathize. Compassion doesn't need us to relate to the experience, but to relate to the person and to say that if that person describes that experience, then that is valid. It also simply requires us to regulate ourselves while other people have difficult experiences and that we can offer them support without also joining them in the emotional experience they're having. And so that's why I'm encouraging compassionate leadership over empathetic. If you would like to say anything or add any comments, I'd love to hear them. You can pop them in the comments below. You can also tag me in Sheila Walsh one on Instagram, Twitter or LinkedIn to have a conversation. But I focus on compassion in any helping profession or any leadership work that I do because compassion doesn't wear us down the way that empathy does and it also decenters us so that we can understand people's experience as they describe it rather than centering our own experience to connect to it. If you have any questions or you'd like me to work with you or leaders in your organisation you can also get in contact through info at sheilawalsh.com. The details will also be in the description.